Hey guys, Chris here, the RC Geek. We've got another review for you guys. Today we're talking about the Freewing A4 Skyhawk available from Motion RC. I keep telling myself to scale back on the foam airplanes, but you know, when these came up on pre-sale, I knew that I had to have one. The A4 is just a classic design that I've always appreciated. And in fact, I still remember seeing the Blue Angels fly A4s back in the 80s. The A4 was such an agile, uh, yet graceful airplane to watch fly. They will probably always be my favorite Blue Angel aircraft. So as we get into this, uh, full disclosure up front here, guys. So uh, this airplane, first of all, it flies really well uh, when you set it up right. But I actually, in the process of making this video, crashed the airplane twice. Uh, mostly a result of my own error. The first time, uh, it was due to installing an already flown battery into the airplane. I got distracted. I was talking with one of my buddies at the field. Took a couple laps and then the fan quit. And of course, it was too low and couldn't get it back to the runway. It didn't glide all that well, but I was pretty darn low. Had I been higher, probably could have made it work. Bummed about that, but not to be defeated. Uh, I actually went through, completely refinished the airplane and upgraded a few things uh, in the process, which we'll talk about here. The airplane came out absolutely beautiful. I loved it. Now, unfortunately, CG moved further back than I had anticipated in the refinish process, uh, and the airplane over-rotated on the second takeoff, and I didn't have enough altitude to fully recover. It was a result of that FCG and a characteristic that the airplane exhibits. When it has an FCG and it gets slow, it actually tends to pitch up. So that's what ended up getting me into trouble. Now, it is fixable. Uh, though I've debated just buying a replacement instead, sometimes that's just the easier option <laughs> to stay motivated. So with that being said, I still wanted to make this video for you guys, obviously, because as I mentioned, the airplane, it flies really well, but it is an A4, and you definitely want to be aware of a few things when setting it up for best success. All right guys, so first up, let's talk about out of the box assembly. So the A4 is a really quick assembly requiring you to glue the aft fuselage section onto the main fuselage and then bolt the dorsal, horizontal tails and wings onto the airframe. From there, just set up your radio and you're pretty much ready to go. Uh, I did find that the dorsal was a pretty tight fit to get onto the fuselage uh, and also uh, the wings were a little fiddly too. So, you know, take your time to avoid dings and lightly clearance things if you need to. Uh, but that said, just to give you an idea, I had the airplane assembled in an evening and then test flew it the very next day. A couple of things that are worth pointing out uh, are that all of the wing servos plug into a single connector, which is nice. Uh, this makes removing the wings easy. Uh, also, the airplane was packaged well, but I did have one spot where the wing connector wire got pressed into the fuselage during packing. Uh, now lastly, I recommend using five minute epoxy to attach the aft fuselage section. I used the supplied urethane glue because I was being lazy and apparently put too much on so the whole glue joint got soft and the foam beads swelled. It hardened up okay uh, but the texture was a little upsetting. Now as a whole you know the airplane is a really nice representation of the A4 and it's a great size for an 80 millimeter airplane. It's really quite big. It's pretty awesome. Uh, the finish is nice and actually it's quite smooth uh, as a whole. Definitely one of the smoother free wing airplanes I've experienced to date. Uh, they include external wing tanks uh, and bullpup missiles, which is a nice touch, though the bullpups seem pretty big and I, I never actually flew with them. I regularly flew with the tanks though, uh, and the avionics hump, that's included as well. For me personally, I actually prefer the look of the A4 without the hump. But there is something slightly off about the canopy shape, uh, and I found that placing the avionics hump on the back actually makes it look more accurate. So I always flew with it on, and the paint scheme that I chose when I refinished it had that hump on it. Now I do wish that they would have included gear doors in the kit. Uh, I'm sure it was all in keeping the price down and keeping it simple. However, this is a really nice looking airplane and I would have paid the extra to have those on the airplane out of the box. The other thing is the main gear are very non-scale trailing link style gear, which kind of kills me a little inside. I don't know, for some reason I have a pet peeve about landing gear. Now, if you want to upgrade, the 90 millimeter Eurofighter main struts are a quick and easy replacement. Uh, the nose doesn't look too bad out of the box though, actually. <music> 
For the radio setup and CG, there are definitely some things to be aware of. First of all, A4s are like deltas in that they need much more elevator than aileron throw. As a whole, A4s don't need much aileron throw at all. Free wing recommends way too much throw in the manual, so be aware of that. Uh, the airplane will roll like a drill bit with their recommended throws. So for the Maiden, I set up the recommended low rate as my high rate uh, and then added two lower rates from there. Through flying the airplane, I settled on the following rates. For elevator, uh, we're looking at about a half to 9 16 inch each way with about 10 to 15 percent expo. For aileron, 5 16 inch each way with again about uh, 10 to 15 percent expo. For rudder, one and three eighths inch uh, each way with 15 percent expo to just to desensitize the steering a bit. And then for flaps, I'm at one inches uh, for the mid setting and then about two inches for full flap. And I actually don't have any elevator mixing in uh, with that on the airplane. Now on the CG, I definitely recommend starting off a bit nose heavy for your first few flights. Once familiar with the airplane, you can start looking at moving the CG back a little bit. To give you an idea, I had the CG at the recommended location for a couple of flights and found that the airplane would do an uncommanded pitch up when it got too slow and it was near stall. So in the flare, I experienced this a few times and so as a result, uh, caused the airplane to strike the tail uh, and then pancake onto the runway a couple of times. So now moving the CG forward alleviated that issue altogether. So for the CG, I recommend setting it at about 180 to 185 millimeters as measured from the wing root gun cutout aft. This is about 10 millimeters forward of what's recommended in the manual. The airplane is a little nose heavy there, but it does fly and land really well at that location. Uh, and it, it doesn't exhibit that pitch up tendency that I was experiencing when I had this, the CG further back. Okay, so before we talk flying, I wanted to talk about the refinish and upgrades that I did briefly. The first thing that was added was a nose gear door. This was made out of sheet styrene uh, and then hinged in the plastic cover that's on the model. You definitely need to add stiffeners in the gear cutout in the fuselage if you do this. I used 3 16 inch uh, thick balsa for that uh, and this also serves as a ledge for the door to rest against when it's closed. For the door I set up and glued the hinges first uh, then lined the perimeter with 16 balsa leaving about a 3 32 inch space all around. Then finished it up by adding a cover from the same sheet sorry. This really stiffens the door uh, to help it hold its shape. I made a spring out of 032 wire that pushes the door open and then use some uh, fi fishing line that pulls the door closed as the gear retracts. I opted for the just fly with tanks route to avoid making main landing gear doors. The second upgrade was upgrading all of the struts. Now as mentioned the 90 millimeter Eurofighter strut worked great for the mains. Uh, you do have to drill out the wire pinholes. Uh, do this carefully and step up the drill size incrementally as it's pretty soft metal. Uh, also, the springs are really stiff, so I recommend cutting them down such that there is no compression on the spring when they're fully extended. Uh, the nose was also replaced with a specially built one my friend made. Now, he used the Euro main strut and then grafted the lower fork and tire from the MiG-21 onto it using epoxy and carbon thread. It really looked awesome on the model. Now the last bit of detail were the vortex generators. I simply used some quarter inch wide 025 thick strip styrene plastic cut at quarter inch lengths. Uh, I made a template from a CAD drawing to plot out the VG locations and then used a pencil to plot it all out. From there, cut slots into the wing at each location and then the plastic pieces were inserted, aligned, and glued. Lastly, on the refinish itself, I used a similar process uh, to what we show in our Warbird refinish and Kefir kit bashing series. Uh, with the exception that I didn't strip the paint or fill in the panel lines. I lightly sanded the stock paint uh, and then prepped over it. The weathering was similar to what we explained in our kit bash weathering video uh, with the exception that I used a lightened base color to fade the centers of the panels versus using a black shade over the panels themselves. What happened is the black created too harsh of a look uh, based on the depth of the panel lines. Uh, so then to weather the panel lines themselves, I used raw umber acrylic thinned down with water and Tamiya acrylic thinner uh, as a wash and sprayed that over the panel lines. 
Uh, from there, I wiped it all off in the direction of the airflow on the flying surfaces and then vertically on the fuselage and dorsal using a paper towel and then the same Tamiya acrylic thinner. Heavier streaking, uh, I used the unthinned raw umber uh, and, and applied streaks on various panels just like we did in the weathering video that we did. The airplane came out really nice and looked about perfect for weathering, I thought. I will be doing a from the bench discussion later this year outlining all kinds of different weathering techniques and ways to use them. I've kind of touched on, on them on a few different videos, so I want to put together a single video discussing all these different techniques. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. All right, one final thing that I did was I actually designed and uh, printed some bombs for the airplane, including the multiple ejector rack, which is the six bombs total. I never got a chance to fly with them though, but those parts are available if you're interested at uh, thercgeek.com slash 3D parts. All right, guys, now let's talk flying of this A4. When you set this airplane up right, it flies really, really well. The airplane tracks well, has good authority and presence, and just looks good in the air. It's not the fastest 80 millimeter jet out there, but it's certainly fast enough and pulls well in the vertical. Flying with and without tanks, there's a little difference in top end speed, but otherwise I didn't notice a huge difference in performance. Uh, I actually preferred to fly the airplane with the tanks as it made the airplane just a little bit easier to see and, I, and actually I feel it helped the airplane track just a little bit truer in the air. Just personal preference for me. Now through flying the airplane, I played with covering the Cheater Ox air grate uh, on the underside. I taped over that and noticed no discernible difference in the aircraft flight performance. Uh, in fact, the airplane got a little bit quieter in the process. The inlets themselves are at about 100% of the fan swept area, so there's really no need uh, for the airplane to have the aux air grate underneath. So in the refinish, I ended up just closing it up altogether. Now one important thing to mention is to calibrate your speed controller before the first flight. Uh, this will ensure you're getting max power out of the fan. So here's a short flight video of the airplane in action. This is the aircraft bone stock before the refinish with the tanks on and the cheater grate taped over. If you'd like to see the full uncut video, you can see that by clicking the icon in the upper right corner. Uh, and you'll find a link to the video. Alright guys, there we have the Freewing A4 Skyhawk. This is a really good flying EDF that looks good out of the box. A4s do take some extra attention and setup, so keep that in mind and you'll have a lot of fun with this airplane. I've been on the fence about getting another one actually. Uh, so that should say something about how much I liked the airplane. That's it for this video guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you found this review helpful. I have a full article on my blog, thercgeek.com with links to everything. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Be sure to subscribe and if you'd like to see some of the other reviews that we've done, you can see those here 
or if you'd like to see my series on foam kit bashing with building, painting, and finishing techniques that you can use on your A4, uh, you can see that down here. So I'll see you at the field.